Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. All right, so AMMs are back online. This one coming from Krypton Writer here on Twitter. A word of warning, though, at least for the first 24 hours. Avoid going all in with a single-sided deposit. This was part of the problem the last time. Uh, make sure you understand what you're doing. Consider the price impact of your deposit and experiment with the AMM with some play money first. AMM is not staking. He does repeat, AMM is not staking. So it is open, the gates are open, and uh, the AMM, the XRPL AMM, is ready to go. Unfortunately, people like Tim France are saying, too late, I already lost everything I own. <laughs> At least I tried, says Krippenreiter here. Uh, <laughs> Drew, <coughs> excuse me. Drew uh, M. Howe wow, uh, says, how can I see how profitable the pool is? I'm considering going into XRP, XLM. Uh, and so Krypton Riker says uh, there are many uh, metrics out there, but you do need to check out some metrics on uh, Anodos Finance or some of these other platforms here. Guys, I will link this in the description if uh, you're still interested in participating in the AMM. Me personally, Working Money Channel, I came at crypto from a finance background. I was trading stocks before. So for me, trading crypto is what I'm most interested in. The technology, I mean, yeah, we need the technology to build out to really get those utility coins up in price. But in a spec market, guys, it's going to be about Bitcoin, how Bitcoin rolls, then how altcoins follow. And this is why I've diversified my portfolio. The $10,000 plus portfolio is up to almost $14,000 at patreon.com slash working money channel. I've got a lot of out of the box uh, picks up there for you guys uh, to take a look at if you're interested. It is only $5 a month. I've kept it relatively affordable because because I want you guys to stick with me throughout. So we're not even close to the end of this bull run yet. XRP is still poised, ready to kind of take off at this point. Uh, hasn't even seen its first full pump. And so, uh, you know, even if we just take a look at the last bull run, and, uh, you know, take a look at where, uh, you know, the height was for XRP right up here and uh, notice, guys, where it started to pump about 151 days before the all time high. So that brought us uh, all the way to November of 2020. Before that, look at what it was doing. It was just kind of meandering up and down, back and forth, back and forth. This was a black swan event, so I don't really count that. But uh, guys, XRP historically does pump last and fast. I know I've said that on this channel multiple times. And so don't let the FUD fool you, okay? Coindesk, again, churning out biased articles. This one coming from Crypto Eddie here on Twitter. Writer Ian Allison, LinkedIn lacks firsthand experience outside the realm of keyboard banging. <laughs> A challenger is coming to disrupt 100% this ripoff pricing model. So she's saying here uh, that maybe they have incentive to write these garbage articles here. He holds Ethereum. Maybe that is uh, the only thing we need to know. He recently wrote this article, guys. Ripple owned Medico, because now I know I'm going to be pronouncing it Medico. Ripple owned Medico sees most of its executives and marketing teams depart. So uh, a negative slant on this story here. Of course, uh, you know, it's just FUD, guys. It is just FUD. This is what we have to remember. Uh, you know, when the market ramps up, uh, the, the participants in the market, they don't give cryptocurrencies a fair shake. They look at what the narrative is. And then, uh, you know, in some cases like Coindesk's case, they tend to propel that narrative. Of course, if you look at the, uh, the meat and potatoes of what is actually going on here, Ripple acquired Medico. Usually there becomes redundancies in management. And so uh, some people depart. That's just how things go. And this I don't feel is uh, necessarily um, very breaking news either. I feel like uh, we did get some news of uh, some executives departing back uh, closer when the acquisition did occur. It has now been uh, almost a year now. I think they got acquired back in May of 2023. It has been almost a year now. And so um, I don't even know why this is even news at this point. Of course, he holds Ethereum. Just make note of that, guys. Wanted to thank Crypto Eddie for pointing that out. When in doubt, look at the metrics. A transfer of large XRP from Upbit to unknown wallet has now sparked speculation. This one courtesy of XRP Crypto Wolf. According to on-chain data, a whopping 32 million XRP has moved now from Upbit, guys, to South Korea's largest cryptocurrency exchange. So guys, that is a huge amount. I did talk uh, briefly about this this morning. This is just uh, another article here picking it up. The whale alert did notice 32 million XRP has been transferred and the identity of the whale behind the transaction is still unknown. So I think, uh, you know, like I was saying this morning, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, traders, uh, you know, picking up on the coins that have not popped yet, that have not actually really, uh, you know, ramped up. I mean, 100% uh, in a crypto run especially at midpoint here, getting very, very close to the Bitcoin halving. This isn't a lot, okay? That was from the bottom. Uh, you know, you compare that to what uh, Solana has done 
for example, and uh, Solana has just been knocking it out of the park. Of course, we did have the uh, the FTX fiasco here, bringing the price way back down to eight dollars, and uh, that has gone up about two thousand percent. Okay, so Solana, uh, a really great performer in the crypto space. Meanwhile, you have coins like XRP and XLM not doing so well, or appearing not to do well, at least at this moment in time. Again, guys, this is why whales are accumulating 32 million coins, 32 million XRP. I did the uh, the calculation this morning and that uh, equates to about $19.5 million. So the setup is there. Investors are taking this opportunity to accumulate. Wanted to thank XRP Crypto Wolf for pointing that out. And the ecosystem is also growing. Oxfordshire's Essences teams up with XRP Healthcare to transform healthcare in Africa. So we've heard a lot of news about uh, XRP Healthcare. Here we're seeing some more expansion guys into Africa. The collaboration will see XRP Healthcare bring Essences' cutting edge patient monitoring solutions initially to Uganda and then more widely across Central Africa. The new technology will be integrated into pharmacies, medical centers and hospitals to be acquired by XRP Healthcare throughout the country this year and will improve patient outcomes as well as optimize providers' costs and options operations. Uh, Keith Airy, CEO of Insensis, he said, we are excited to partner up with XRP Healthcare to bring our cutting edge patient monitoring solutions to Africa. This collaboration will not only benefit patients by ensuring better healthcare and outcomes, but also help healthcare providers deliver services more efficiently. We look forward to working together to elevate healthcare standards across the country, Insensis said with the partnership, uh, saying that it's a unique opportunity uh, for healthcare providers across Africa to leapfrog outdated equipment and embrace a digitally connected world. So, uh, XRP Healthcare still focusing on the continent of Africa. I do believe that they are also uh, expanding outside of Africa, looking at other regions around the world. They were based in Africa, but uh, you know, obviously they have had some success there. They're also expanding uh, with partnerships with new companies like this one with Asansis. So some great news there, uh, you know, developing over on the XRP ledger. So wanted to thank uh, DJ Peter Vass for pointing that out. I mean, you gotta love the XRP community. Ashley Prosper, thank you for this. Okay, I've been waiting for a resource like this for a very long time. She says, I've turned the list of Ripple connections from 121 countries into one interactive map. Now you can click on a country's marker to see all the Ripple connections in that region. So check this out, guys. The link is uh, is here and I will link this in the description for you guys. But here is the map here, uh, and I will link this one too in the description. Basically, you just have to scroll over any one of these little pins here, uh, and it gives you a detailed synopsis of what uh, the country, what kind of information we have with regards to a Ripple connection to that particular country. So I just picked Cameroon randomly, July 2020, covered by Currency Cloud Partnership with Ripple. If you look at, uh, I don't know, Pakistan over here, we got a little bit more here uh, in September of 2019, Pakistan's Faisal Bank partnered with Ripple to use RippleNet in 2021. So we, she gives us a timeline too. The UAE's financial services provider Lulu Exchange has partnered with Pakistan's leading uh, Al Fala Bank to facilitate remittances using Ripple. And then in August of 2023, the State Bank of Pakistan acknowledges the promising work of Ripple and XRP in its 2022 financial stability report. So this is worth a bookmark, I think, uh, for sure. Uh, and, you know, the more prominent countries definitely have uh, more, uh, you know, detailed partnerships and more uh, extensive partnerships as well. The United States over here, look at that, founding members, you know, founders of Ripple, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, again, a great link here if you guys uh, are interested in seeing where Ripple implementation is occurring all over the world. So wanted to thank, super duper thanks to Ashley Prosper there for uh, creating that, giving us a great resource here. You know, the XRP community used to be full of these types of resources and then... Uh, you know, as price goes down, as people get less interested in XRP over the bear years, uh, you know, people just lose interest. And it's unfortunate because, guys, these are the times when accumulating really makes sense. These are the times that are going to make you wealthy. I know I don't want to make the same mistake twice. I feel like I should have cashed out more crypto in the last bull run. But I'm not going to dwell on the past. This time is different. Again, patreon.com slash working money channel if you want to see what my plan is this time around. Another tweet here from Digital Asset by guys. Ripple has now unveiled a trillion dollar ODL corridor. The recent announcement of Ripple's expansion for its on-demand liquidity corridor has had a substantial impact on the XRP ecosystem. This report is from the Ailtra platform. They've highlighted this expansion, which correlates with the remarkable increase in XRP token volume. So um, they're noticing XRP token volume going up, stirring excitement and speculation within the XRP community about its future valuation. This development is part of Ripple's broader 
strategy to enhance its on-demand liquidity service, which uh, has been recently rebranded as Ripple Payments, which utilizes XRP as a bridge currency for cross-border payments. Currently, over 1.6 million XRP tokens are circulating within the Cosmos ecosystem facilitated by the XRPL Corium Bridge. The significant increase has also positioned Ripple's XRP at the cusp of a notable price shift fueled by a looming supply shock. So, um, it doesn't really seem, it's, it's kind of vague as to how this is uh, really going to bring up XRP price. Nevertheless, I guess they're saying, uh, you know, more building on the, the XRPL, especially via Corium. This is what will help uh, eventually build demand to the XRP ledger. Again, guys, you know, this is why I bring you guys all this information every single day, seven days a week. If you guys have noticed, I do do a video every single day of the week, no breaks, because there's so much coming out, so many connections to be made, and so much XRP demand to be had once we do see this perfect storm uh, eventually come to fruition. And, uh, you know, again, we're at the mercy of the SEC, we're at the mercy of US regulators, US legislators, but guys, all this will eventually come. I'm really hoping that we do see more real world utility by the end of 2024, uh, and, and in a more meaningful uh, capacity. Ripple has said, we need liquidity. We need XRP to be super, super, super liquid. And this is why, uh, you know, this is why XRP does perform so well, why it's still in the top 10. It is a very liquid cryptocurrency. It's very fast. It's very good at uh, exchanging other cryptos. So in a spec market, you can see why XRP trades the way it does, fueling, uh, you know, some altcoin trades if it is used as a currency to get into certain altcoins because it is so quick. If you're moving from another altcoin to XRP to another altcoin, a lot of these exchanges do have XRP pairs as well, BitTrue being one of the major ones. So there are many different reasons to like XRP and invest in XRP, in my opinion, but I think the most obvious ones, guys, are just not being revealed. I mean, you and I know that Robert Michnick used to work at Ripple. He came up with the XRP value calculator. Uh, and now he's at BlackRock. And here's what he said about investing in cryptocurrencies. Not really giving us too much information. But again, guys, remember who this is. Robert Michnick, one of the co-creators of the XRP valuation calculator. Should we expect BlackRock to now go from Bitcoin, you know, kind of building this fund on Ethereum, and here comes everything else. And as Mike said, you know, dog with hat is going to be the next uh, fund you guys launch. Like, how do you think about what that fund is? And then kind of like the long tail of these assets. Crypto Twitter would, would love to believe that uh, dog with hat ETF is coming next. I actually don't know what dog with hat even is. I didn't, didn't get that reference, but um, you know, what that I, answers that question. <laughs> what, what I can say is that um, for our client base, it is Bitcoin overwhelmingly number one, their focus, a little bit in Ethereum and very, very little everything else. And when you think about it in terms of, you know, various metrics and dimensions, I mean, Bitcoin, 52% of the market cap of the whole asset class, Ethereum, but 17-ish today, maybe 18. And the next that is even sort of investable is like three, right? Uh, and so there's just worlds apart there in terms of, you know, track record, liquidity, product market fit, investor, narrative clarity, all these things, right? So that's where... Um, I think there's some misplaced uh, speculation that there's going to be a long tail of, of others from us. And that's really not where we're focused. Not where you're focused yet. But uh, I think when we do see more cryptocurrencies that do provide a real world application, that's where we're going to see value. And that's where we're going to see demand for these particular cryptocurrencies. Again, I have to say it one more time for the third time. This guy was the co-creator of the XRP valuation calculator now working for BlackRock. So I wanted to thank uh, Sento Sumo Saba for posting that. Now, he broke it down. Uh, Bitcoin is about 52%-ish, uh, Ethereum about 17, 18%-ish of what uh, BlackRock customers are investing in. And other cryptocurrencies represent about 3%. So investing in a basket, this is what Brad Garlinghouse suggests, not financial advice, but here's Brad Garlinghouse from Paris Blockchain Week. Another great clip from the other day. Listen to this. I, I, I told David this backstage, when friends of mine ask me, hey, I want to invest in crypto, how should I do that? I always say, look, like, invest in a basket. I'm not saying just buy Bitcoin or just buy XRP. I'm saying you want to invest in a, a basket and have diversification. So, look, I think there will be other ETFs. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take a little bit of time because the United States SEC is fighting that. But I, I think one of the things that people don't fully understand that uh, they haven't really paid attention to, in the United States, there's only two cryptos that have regulatory clarity. Bitcoin, and because of the fight we had with the courts, XRP has regulatory clarity that it's not a security. And so that, that is, I think, it's a differentiator. And I think 
it does matter. To answer your macro point, look, there will be other ETFs in the United States. I hardly predict the timeline because I don't know how hard Gary Gensler and this SEC will fight. There will be other coins, and even Brad Garling has did reiterate Bitcoin and XRP only because of Ripple's efforts are the only two cryptocurrencies with regulatory clarity. So, I mean, it can't be that BlackRock will only provide a Bitcoin trading product on their platform if their clients request something more. Once we see XRP utility globally, guys, look at how many countries are already using RippleNet. Eventually, when we do see worldwide applications, worldwide utility, worldwide regulations, this is when we're going to see the price eventually go up based on the demand. That's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.